172 172 
ndiye mwaya tunasi Sabri eye yeye yeye papa the diocesan bishop ebema the archbishop of canterbury akwaba the diocesan bishop will now Please. welcome the Archbishop of Canterbury. Open prayer. Open prayer by the Dean. Open prayer by the Dean. You have to give us the opening prayer. Please come. Shall we be upstanding with all humility? Shall we pray? Most gracious and merciful Father, we have the cause to give you thanks for the grace and love bestowed on us this day. We are grateful to you for the traveling message granted your servant, the most reverend and right honorable Justin Walby and his entourage to arrive safely on the soil of this land given to your lovely people to dwell. We trust and believe that the coming of your servant to this land will open the floodgate of blessings to the leadership of the Anglican Church here in Ghana. As you stretch your hand to bless your church, you will extend it to touch His Majesty Utum for Osaitu II, for him to receive your protection, guidance, mercy, and peace, which passes all understanding. It is our prayer that the joy flowing in our hearts now will yield a dividend that will make us one to work together as soldiers of the cross to advance the cause of Christ our Lord and Savior. May your peace, mercy, and protection be upon us all at this meeting in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we invite the right reverend Oscar Christian Amwa, the thousand bishop of Kumasi, to give us the welcome address. His Grace, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and his wife, Mrs. Caroline Welby, the Primate of the Church of the Province of West Africa, and the Archbishop of the Internal Province of Ghana. All Archbishops and Assistant Bishops here present, the clergy, the Chancellor, and Registrar of the Diocese, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the media. It is a great honor and privilege to have in our midst the Archbishop of Canterbury, the most reverend and right honorable Justin Welby and his wife, Mrs. Caroline Welby, together with delegates attending the ACC as the Anglican Consultative Council 18 plenary meeting. On behalf of the clergy and lay members of the Diocese of Kumasi, we welcome you all including bishops who have come from various dioceses within Ghana and West Africa. For us, as a diocese, this is a very important occasion and will go down into history. Personally, and I believe it's not just mere coincidence. 
by divine arrangements. It is an occasion that will forever be memorable because this basis coincides with my 65th birthday, which is today. We are so delighted to receive the Archbishop of Canterbury and appreciate his time to visit the cathedral and the King of Ashanti. Despite the busy schedule ahead of him, in respect of the ACC meeting in Accra, we are certain that this visit comes with enormous blessings for all of us. Once again, we welcome you, the Most Reverend and Right Honorable Justin Webby and Mrs. Carolina Webby, the wife, and your team. Akwaba, thank you. Thank you so much the Lord Bishop of Kumas. At this juncture, we call upon the primate and metropolitan archbishop of the Church of the Province of West Africa and also the archbishop for the internal province of Ghana, the most reverend, Dr. Sere Kobna Ben Smith, to introduce the archbishop of Canterbury. Thank you very much. Uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Portal Welby, was born on the 6th January 1956. I've just checked it out. And so I can confidently say that he is the most reverend and right honorable Justin Portal Kofi Welby. He was born on a Friday. So his full name is the Most Reverend and Right Honorable Justin Porter Kofi Welby, meaning born on Friday. Ordained in 1992, he spent 15 years in Coventry Diocese and worked in places of significant deprivation. In 2002, he was made a canon of Coventry Cathedral, where he jointly led his international reconciliation work. He's a graduate of Cambridge University, Eton College, among others. He was dean of Liverpool from 2007 to 2011, Bishop of Durham, 2011 to 2012, and was announced the 105th Archbishop of Canterbury in 2012. On the 21st of March 2013, he was installed Archbishop of Canterbury in a service at Canterbury Cathedral. Archbishop Justin has three personal priorities for his ministry. One is renewed prayer and religious life. That's one of the things he will prayer a religious life. One, two, reconciliation within the church and supporting the church's role as a peacemaker. And the third one, which I think is very will also be very prominent for us, is encouraging every Christian to share his faith or her faith the faith with other people and to see themselves as witnesses of Jesus. He is the primate of all England and he is the symbolic head, the spiritual head of the Anglican communion of 70, over 70 million people worldwide. He continues to make visits around the communion and I'm sure that you know that this is his second visit to Kumasi. He has already been here once and this is his second visit 
to Kumasi. Archbishop Justin is married to Caroline, and they have five children and four grandchildren. Today is part of us, and we heartily welcome your grace, you to your own cathedral in Kumasi Asante. Let's give him a resounding applause as we invite your grace to make a short. Shall we be outstanding as we welcome the right, most reverend, right, honorable Justin Kofi Welby? A clap of room for you. We are privileged. Please be seated. May the Holy Spirit of God come and touch our hearts and fill us with the fire of his love. Amen. Mr. Dean, thank you for the welcome to your cathedral. My Lord Bishop, thank you for the welcome to your diocese and cathedral. And your grace, thank you for the wonderful welcome to your province and all of you. It is amazing and beautiful to be with you again in Kumasi and to come to this um, remarkable cathedral, this enormous cathedral. Thank you. I want to talk especially to those many who come from schools and who were here this morning. A week ago, I was in South Sudan with um, a group of colleagues, and there we traveled with the Pope, Pope Francis, and with the head of the Presbyterian Church in Scotland, the moderator, Ian Greenshields. And we went there because South Sudan, the world's newest country, became independent in 2008. And in 2013, only five years later, they began a civil war and they have had a terrible civil war since that time. So out of 15 years of independence, 10 years have been war. We went, the three of us, Pope Francis and Ian Greenshields and myself, to a prayer meeting. It was a week ago today, in the evening. It grew dark as the prayer meeting went on and as it grew dark there was a full moon and in front of us in an open space were about a hundred thousand people who had come to pray for peace and to tell their government to stop stealing and to stop provoking violence. I want you to imagine for a moment how those people in that huge crowd felt. What were the hopes 15 years ago? They'd had 30 years of war for independence. And within five years, their independence had been lost to the forces 
of militias and warlords who killed 500,000 people to date. What disappointment. And yet, in that crowd, they prayed, they danced, they praised God, they prayed for peace. The Christian life is not easy, but it is always certain. It is certain because Jesus Christ is faithful. The last Archbishop to came, come here came 20 years ago. I presume it was Rowan Williams with the beard. Yes, it was. In 1973, this cathedral was, chain, was built when the diocese became the diocese of Kumasi. And by the way, my Lord, many happy returns of the day. Happy birthday. What a lot has changed in 50 years. I look at some of the older people and ask you to remember 50 years ago. How much has changed in Ghana? How much has changed in the world? How much will change in the lives of those who are young here today? When it is the 100th anniversary of the, this cathedral, this land, this wonderful country, will look completely different. There will be forms of transport we can't guess. There will be health treatments we can't imagine. If it is like the UK, it will be richer than we can dream of. And all that is good and is the gift of God. But one thing will not have changed, and that is that Jesus Christ is faithful to those whom he calls. But that is not always believed. As Britain has got richer, people have thought, we do not need God in the way we used to. At best, God is someone you meet up with on Sunday, and the rest of the week, presumably, he's, God is doing nothing, and I'm working and making money, and people just forget about God. What I call for and pray for is that you will learn and the older ones among us like me know already that because Jesus Christ is faithful Jesus Christ does not change when our country changes or our life changes this is what the people in South Sudan know that even when there is disaster, they go on trusting God because God does not change. And when there is success, we must go on trusting God because God does not change. Abraham, in Genesis chapter 12 and verses 1 to 9, is called by God. He's in a safe place called Haran. He'd lived there all his life, almost. He lived with his uncle, and they were in a good place. And God says to Abraham one day, 
leave this place and go to a country that I am going to give you. And Abraham goes from someone who is settled to someone who is on a journey. As Christians, we are all on a journey. And on that journey, we do not see our destination. We are promised that God has a place in heaven prepared for us. But we can't see it. What we see is what are, is around us. We see dangers, we see hopes, we see our children and grandchildren. We see joy and sadness. Abraham is a pattern for us in how to journey in which we trust God and worship God even if we do not see God. Peter, in his first epistle, says to the Christians, although you do not see him, yet you love him. My encouragement to you this day is very, very simple. The world is uncertain. There are wars and famines. There is poverty. There is richness. There is success. There are places of peace. But we cannot control those. But what we can do is if we say to Jesus Christ, my life is in your hands and I will always follow you. And if we listen to what he says to us, he will say as these stations of the cross show us, I love you, I died for you, I saved you, and I will always be with you. When we love Christ, he loves us a million times more as a result. We are held by him and gathered by him and saved by him. There is no life better than a life lived in the service of Jesus Christ. Last September, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II died. You all, many of you will know that. She had been queen for 70 years. I saw her quite often. At her funeral were more than 200 heads of government and heads of state from around the world. But what I was able to say to them in the sermon was because she always trusted God in Christ and loved him. She knew her future and she would be with God. And so would the poorest and least important person who trusts Jesus Christ. This country and all of you are on a journey, a journey which I pray will get better and better. But for you, if your hand, if your life is in the hands of God, like Abraham, not only will your future be better, but it will be eternal in the love of God. If things go well, do not forget that everything we have comes from God. If things go badly, do not despair, for everything comes from God. I pray that
that you will be those who follow Jesus Christ all your lives, find his joy, share the good news of his love, live at peace with others, and are with him forever. People will fail you. God will never fail you. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Most Reverend. Right on up. Justin. Kofi. Another clap of friend. Another clap of friend. Now, I'm going to say, 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 i will never fail you. At this juncture, presentation. As custom demands, if you have a visitor, a very great visitor, you give the visitor a present. We have two presents here, two groups. One group is present from the church of the province of West Africa. A clap offering. Two the right, most reverend, right, honorable Justin and the wife. It's a pleasure just to know. We have the Bishop of Liberia here, please. Bishop of Liberia, are you here? Bishop of Liberia, please, please come forward. The Bishop of Cameroon, please come forward. Clap for them, they are here, yes. <laughs> we have the Bishop elect for Gambia, please come forward, come forward, yes, please. Then the Bishop's from Ghana, please. Second D, Suyane, please come forward. You are going to join the Archbishop to give the presentation. Bishop of Ho, please come forward. Sovereign Bishop of Accra, please come for them. You are knowing them. I want you to know them. Yes, see them. Yes. These are, yes, the Bishop of Dunko Onofin is also here. Bishop of Kofodua is also here, please. Bishop of Yosu is also here, yes. A clap of you, a clap of you, please. Then the immediate past, immediate past, Bishop of Kumasi and the primate, past primate, recently conferred as the Archbishop Emeritus, Archbishop Emeritus of <laughs> yes. Now, your grace, primate, please, Bishop of Kumasi, please come and do the honors as. We humbly invite the most reverend, right honorable, to receive the presentation. Yes. Please come, Mrs. But I must have been a must have been a blessing. Please, Bishop, help, help in the blessing. Mother Ben Smith, please come. Mother Superior Ben Smith, please come. <laughs> yes. Mother Superior Ben Smith, do us an honor. This is for, for Mrs. Caroline. Yeah. 
That's from Kumasi Dalsis. Kumasi Dalsis. Kumasi Dalsis. Yes. Please, from the Mother's Union of Kumasi Dalsis to Mother Caroline. Please for Mother Carrie. For Mother Sion.
even to the end of the age. Set your hand upon them and give them hope and love and joy in one another and love for you and for all the people of God. Bless their ministry and all the demands it makes of them. Give them lives that are long and full of the knowledge of your presence. Keep them faithful to you amidst trouble and grant them success in their endeavor to serve you. Blessed blessing rest upon them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The choir will lead us to sing Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday, please. Yes. Hey baby. Hey baby. Hey baby. The dean of the internal province of Ghana will give us a short vote of thanks. So that we can come back for the right, Reverend Matthias. The dean of the internal province of Ghana. Thank you very much. Your Grace Justin Wilby, whenever I see you, I always remember the day I first met you in Coventry Cathedral as Canon Reconciler when you walked to me and asked me to read the gospel for you. And then today to see you in Kumasi Cathedral, it's a joy of having you here in Ghana. Beloved in the Lord, thanking God for making our visit to Kumasi and St. Cyprian's Cathedral a successful one. I stand here on behalf of our primate and metropolitan of the Church of the Province of West Africa, His Grace, Archbishop Cyril. To first and foremost convey the gratitude of the archbishops, the bishops, the clergy, and the faithful of the Church of the Province of West Africa to His Grace, the Archbishop of Canterbury, the primate of all England, and the spiritual head of the Anglican Communion, the most reverend and right honorable Justin will be and his dear wife Mama Caroline for accepting the invitation to come to Kumasi and for bringing us all of us here from all walks of life to this historic and memorable occasion thank you your grace Secondly, to stand in the earlier pot protocols to convey our sincere thanks to Bishop Christian, the clergy, and the faithful 
of the Diocese of Kumasi for welcoming us warmly. It's like we are in heaven. We thank you, my Lord Bishop. And finally, to thank every one of us here for being part of this memorable occasion. May the good Lord bless all, bless all of us throughout the rest of the day and throughout every activity that we undertake here. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, the Dean. Shall we all rise to receive the final blessing from the Most Reverend, Right Honorable Dustin? The Lord be with you. As the blessing is given, let us each open our hearts to receive from God the blessing that he knows we need. For those who are struggling May Christ give you strength. For those who are sad, may Christ bring you comfort. For those who are fearful, may Christ give you hope. And for those who experience disturbance and trouble, may the Lord who brings all peace give you his peace which cannot be taken away. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you, fill you, and guard you, now and always. Amen. Announcement from here, the Archbishop of Canterbury together with the primates and the Bishop of Kumasi will plant a memorable tree to commemorate this visit just on the compound. Then from there we'll move to the Benshia Palace. We are actually behind time. In fact, we forgot we have, have here the Bishop of Tamale. Please, we forgot to mention the Bishop of Tamale is here. Research him 379. 379 the back of the program now thank we all